that last one went a little too far too long okay anyway uh, hi this is uh, this is part seven of Jihad at Java Jills if you want to see the ones that before or after make a YouTube account download this video call it Jihad at Java Jills part seven and who knows someone who's done the same thing but has Jihad at Java Jills part six or Jihad at Java Jills part 10 or something like that uh, eventually if it all comes to bed can come together you can uh, see how it progresses and then find out what happens to the lead character uh, I'm doing that in the hopes that when you do that you'll also download those videos that expose Islam and if we can, I, they're excellent exposing Islam, and this has got David Wood, and he's excellent exposing Islam, showing the errors of, of Islam. And if we can get a lot of those out there, maybe Muslims will think, what? The Quran teaches that? The Hadith teaches that? And then they won't join ISIS. And it might slow down the fact that we will have to pay the jizya tax, which is an extortion tax, if Islam becomes strong in number. So... This is Jihad at Java Jills Part 7 here. Okay. All right. Well, bring it, bitch, said Willard with cold sim Yeah, well, bring it, bitch, said Willard with cold simmering fury. By the way, what I set up in BART stations, I call Project Independence Day. If you've seen the movie Independence Day, you might do the math and know why and know why I named it that. Project Independence Day is the title I, I will give uh, for those who actually picked uh, uh, Project Independence Day is the title I will give for those who actually picked up DVDs and CDs to really uh, uh, to, to, to rally around by getting in contact with those who who have typed Project Independence Day into their web browsers as well to see what becomes of the lead character in my science fiction novel in segments on those data disks. Uh, this character doesn't doesn't wrong. It's not going to work the way he has it. But if you do it the way I have it, which is uh, have it as a get a YouTube account, have this uploaded, call it uh, Jihad Java Jills Part Seven, and they and then someone else does the same thing, collaboration. Hey, then we might. Uh, and Islam reeling when those other videos are downloaded. Because again, they're excellent showing the errors of Islam and the threat it poses too. So anyway, here it goes here. All right. Anyway, this guy's not doing it the way it should be. Uh, all right. He's smart, but he's not that smart. Willard said with soothing, with soothing hate, I bet you really think that fag shit makes you sound smart, don't you? Smart or not, it's really, it's a reality I've created. All I need now is your rage coming at me on video. Bring it, bitch, bring it, shouted Willard with fury. Brian thought for a while, then said, then thinking of the creepy Kevin Spacey character in the movie called Seven, said, well, as far as this rematch is concerned, all I care that you bring to this fight is that you bring your wrath. Bring your wrath. Bring it and become wrath. Become wrath for me. And with that, Brian pressed the button to hang up on his, on his cell to hang up his, on his cell phone. He turned again to the sunset and thought, man, if I were just 30 years younger, I bet I could actually possibly entertain a young, cute, sexy babe up here. Why, she might have then even loved me. After uploading his, con his conversation, he secretly videotaped with Cowboy to help promote his upcoming sacrifice to bring attention to those excellent exposing Islam. Brian hid DVDs in the walls of the house he felt he'd never be able to return to since he really felt Cowboy was going to take him out 
before he died a painful, humiliating cancer death all alone somewhere. The DVDs had the words Project Phantom Sharpie pinned onto them, containing some of his life in video and writing. Although he would be embarrassed if anyone should ever come upon Project Phantom, since it was so revealing about him, he was confused that due to the place he hid them in, they that they would be for, that they would first be destroyed in a fire before ever being discovered since the house was located in a forested area on the side of a hill ending up possibly like the Oakland homes back in around back around back around 1992 how much time do i have left here oh yes okay got uh, it's halfway done here six more minutes okay a day later, Brian was driving through his neighborhood he grew up in. He was about to stop at, stop at his home when he noticed that the windows were broken out and smoke was rising from the backyard. He saw people other than the cowboy walking about in the living room. I thought I told him, I thought he told me I was his only friend, thought Brian. Looks like he's pretty popular after all. Looking again at the smoke rising from the backyard, Brian sadly said, probably be my books pictures and videotapes. <coughs> You've got squatters, Mr. Richardson, he heard an old uh, lady voice say from the car after uh, stopping next to his, stopping next to his. Cops don't seem interested. I called them twice. No doubt he was able, no doubt, he, no doubt he was able to say his, the house was his now, since he's usually always there anyway. Well, let him have it said Brian with reg resignation in his voice. Brian suddenly heard one of Willard's friends, alert Willard, cowboy, uh, when he looked out the window and saw Brian parked out in the street. Brian was, wasn't quite ready for a fight, he wasn't quite ready to fight him, so he put the car in reverse and backed up quickly with, with Willard calling him a chicken at, out at, on Brian's lawn. After driving about the town for what he felt would be his last time, producing memories that only brought tears to his eyes, he passed by the neighborhood market owned by Muslims that Willard would always go with a dollar. With the dollar, he'd get out of Brian to buy one little cigarette. Brian didn't realize till later that he was that it was that that was where his dollars were going until he went to the market with his friend and used one of his dollars to get another cigarette. To keep that from happening further, Brian ended up buying packs of cigarettes and, and tried to give a cigarette to Willard for 50 cents, telling him he'd rather, he, he, telling he'd rather, fit his 50, he'd rather, he'd, he'd rather 50 cents go to him than a dollar contributing to full-on Sharia law later. But Willard never seemed to have the money, and Willard managed to get a free cigarette out of Brian anyway. The market owned the market owned by Pakistani Muslims got a lot of money over the years from Brian when Willard would use Brian's money to buy Natty Daddies, Hurricanes, Mickeys, and Steel Reserves. Instead of going to the Hindu-owned neighborhood market like Brian thought Willard was doing, he was actually going to the Muslim-owned one. One time when both Brian and Willard went into the market to buy smokes for Willard, Willard drunkenly asked the young Muslim at the counter, Hey, when are you guys going to convert to Christianity like my friend and me? You guys could have fun then. You, could, you guys could have fun then instead of having your, your fucking asses up in the air on a prayer rugs all the time. Hearing Willard say that embarrassed Brian no end. Since such a memory came back to him, Brian thought he'd try to be an ambassador for Christ and tried to let the Muslims know that Willard was holding the truth and unrighteousness and not really a true Christian, but a carnal Christian who believed he had a Jesus card to screw around without the fear of eternal damnation, even though there is a scripture saying, God is not mocked. You can't tell me that Jesus didn't die for my sins. You can't tell me I'm not a Christian. Brian remembered Willard drunkenly and angrily telling him more than once. Hearing Cowboy say that depressed Brian and made him wonder if there might actually be a flaw in his own beliefs. Still, Brian wanted to try to explain to the Muslims that Willard was partly right and that, um, 
and that uh, was, was partly right about that, but that the before scriptures, Holy Bible, the Quran says, the Quran uh, confirms and reminds, warns the Christian about being saved yet as by fire. Yeah, being saved yet as by fire. Yeah, being saved yet as by fire. Should they continue to sin willfully after being saved? That God chasteneth those whom he loves. That, that uh, God forbid was added to what shall we sin that grace should abound. I have to somehow make Christianity make sense to them to keep these guys from going to hell. Uh, to, to make it uh, so they can go to the real heaven. So they can make it, so they can, uh, so they can uh, go to the real heaven, Brian told himself, admitting that, admitting that these Muslims seem to be more godly and holy than the cowboy and even himself. Remembering cowboy telling him that he secretly watched one do his thing all by himself on a prayer rug. Let's see how much time is left here. Oh, I better hurry up here. When Brian walked into the market, the this, this, this scripture, speak the truth in love, went through his mind. The Muslim market own, owner looked shocked to see how bad Brian, Brian looked since the last time. Brian told him that he decided to quit dyeing his hair. That dyed or not, there was no way he would ever be able to attract a babe anyway. With that, the Muslim said with a smile, well, that's because they are babes. You have to wait about five years, then you can attract them. Uh, the Muslim laughed at his own inside joke, making Brian look perplexed. The Muslim then said, you know, because we supposedly married little girls, because Muhammad, praise be unto him, uh, supposedly married the six-year-old uh, like uh, they are saying about him now. Uh, lies, of course. Brian said, Oh you, oh, you mean Muhammad marrying little Aisha when she was six and consummated the marriage with her when she was nine? And Muhammad was 54, according to Sahih Sound Hadith? The Muslim looked shocked that Brian would know who Aisha and the words Sahih and Hadith were. Oh, you know something? I gotta stop it here. Bye.